All right, so two things before we get into the video is one, let me know what you guys think of the sound and how this microphone looks in the shot. If you guys wouldn't mind me doing my videos in the future like this, um, just because I think the sound of it and the way it looks and everything is probably perfect for, I would say, my videos going forward. The second thing is, is that Onsbot did pretty much what Mayano did. If you guys have been around since then, when I've talked about no longer working with Mayano and I talked about my frustrations and how they triggered my PTSD and everything and Onsbot ended up doing the same thing where they emailed me back asking to see the video before it goes live for technical specs and specifications and making sure that I got the stuff right and stuff. So Future Squid here, I've tried to edit this portion into the video itself and this portion is like 15 minutes long and I'm not trying to do that. So I will leave the unedited rant and uh, unlisted video down in the description so you can get the full context and get more understanding of my feeling behind this process. But with that being said, when it comes to me reaching out to a company or a company reaching out to me to do a collaboration together on a product review, I always put a email specifications of what I do as far as my review process and what is expected from the company. And if they can't agree to it or wherever, then there's no reason for us to move forward as far as them sending out a product or something like that. And that's perfectly fine. The problem is, is that so many companies are quickly to agree with what I have said as far as my stipulation goes. And one of them is that the company will not see the video before it goes live, regardless of anything. And Onsbot, just like Mayano and a lot of other companies, all agree to this. And then they try to come in at right before the video goes live to sit there and say, can I see the video before it goes live for technical reasons or specification check and all that stuff. And they say they won't manipulate my video or change anything on it. I'm not saying that Onsbot will not do that or wherever, and they will just leave my video alone and just make sure that I have the technical specs correctly. But the problem with this is that that makes no sense on any level at all because any of the specifications that would be used in a product review should already been double checked and triple checked by the company before they posted it on the website where somebody can purchase the product or the Amazon listing before somebody can purchase the product because that's the company's job to make sure that they advertise all the specifications and all the key points of the product. That's what the company should be doing. So if me as the reviewer is grabbing that information and incorporating it into my review, if that information is wrong, that should have been checked by the company because that's where I'm getting my information from. That's the only way I would get my information is looking at a user manual that comes with the product or, or like some kind of digital user manual, or like I said, from the company's website that, you know, has the product listing or the Amazon listing or whatever it may be. That's the only way I'm going to get my technical specs and parameters. So why do you need to check my video? Again, that should be done by the company. They should be doing their own due diligence to make sure whatever they're disseminating out to the public is correct. So again, that just shows that it's a fallacy of them needing to check somebody's video before it goes live. So many times I've run into this where a company tries to skirt around that deal that we've already made as far as you not seeing the video before it goes live, they skirt around it by trying to say they need to check it to make sure that, you know, the information about the product is correct. Because if they're doing it to me, they have to be doing it to somebody else. You know what I'm saying? And they can't structure their sentences and how they do it or wherever in the way that they do if it wasn't working. You see what I'm saying? And like I said, most people who are astute will understand what I'm coming from when I say that if I'm getting the specifications from the company themselves, how could it be wrong? It doesn't make any sense because a company would, again, do their due diligence to make sure that they're putting out the correct information for those who are inquiring about purchasing potentially the product. And again, that's the only way I would get my information is from the company. So why do you need to check my video for information that you have put out? That doesn't make any sense. Me as a content creator going forward, I've specified in previous videos, but I think that this just put the nail in a coffin. Like this is the final straw. I'm going to, at this point going forward, make a legal binding contract that if a company does some BS like this in the future, then the review is null and void. As soon as they mention anything about seeing the review for any reason or wherever, it just nullifies everything. And I'm just not going to do the product review. That, that, that's just how it has, it's going to have to be going forward. 
because I am sick and tired of these companies trying to play me like I'm dumb. I'm not specifically just calling out Onsbot on this, and I'm not trying to make the company feel bad or the representative feel bad or anything like that. But like I said, insulting my intelligence is one of my triggers for PTSD. I talked about my military service in the past and anybody who's had military experience will already know that when somebody outranks you, then you can't really open your mouth and say anything about it or whatever. You just have to take it for what it is pretty much doing the same thing. The company is trying to skirt around or wherever because they think that they sent out a product that I would be cool with them seeing the video after we've already agreed on this previous stated, you know, collaboration requirements in that in that email. So now I'm gonna have to take it up to legal action. And I shouldn't have to do that. It should be just common sense. If we agree on something beforehand, and now you're trying to change something that I we both agreed on and your lame excuse is that you need to see it for sp technical specs and making sure that I have stuff correctly in the video when the information that you disseminated to the public should be already correct if I used any of it in the video. And that, that honestly just it irritates me to a different level that I could not even explain. I'm trying to hold back and still be somewhat, I would say, nice about it, but I am infuriated. Not to mention I'm having to go back and put this in my video that I've already rendered and went through the whole painstaking process of shooting B-roll, editing this stuff, letting it render. And like I said, I don't have time for this BS. I have three, four, maybe five hours at most or whatever to do this stuff. I'm supposed to be streaming right now. I have to go watch my son after this wherever for 12 hours. You, you know what I'm saying? And I know people are not gonna understand it or whatever because it's, you know, that's my job. I'm, I decided to do product reviews and I decided to work with companies and stuff. And I, I get it. People are not going to be, uh, people are going to be insensitive. It is perfectly fine. But the level of incompetence here, trying to insult my intelligence and play me and stuff like that. And I know they're doing it with other content creators out there and everything. And like I said, I don't have anything personally against Onspot or this representative or whatever, but this stuff got to stop from coming from companies trying to skirt around agreed upon stuff or whatever because if, if this was a legal binding contract and they still try to do this i could press legal charges against them if i had it stipulated in the contract and that's why i said going forward that's what i have to do so here's the rest of the video review sorry for getting a little bit ranty or upset or whatever but again i don't play around with this stuff i don't and like I said, that's why those stipulations are there. There's a reason why we have to agree on them before we move forward. And like I said, now I'm just going to have to have that legal binding contract. Here's the rest of the review. Budget webcam live streaming cameras, webcams for using on content creation for talk ahead videos or top downs or anything like that. There are a lot of options out there from a whole bunch of different types of companies from Elgato to eMeet to Logitech to Razer, whatever it may be. But I would argue from Onsbot, their line of webcams are probably the nicest looking as far as like the image quality, as well as the ease of use with the software, not having any issues when um, I've used the eMeet S800. I recently did a review on that. That is a 4K30 webcam for $150, but at the launch price, it was $100. So it was very interesting to me, but the image quality just coming straight out of the box was not really good. And even though you could critique the webcam in their software to make it to look the best it was very hard to make sure that your webcam was in 4k 30 as well as some of the other i would say quality of life improvements that that software needed to be ready for i would say commercial use or personal use but this kind of thing goes both hand in hand of quality of products and software because at the end of the day the user is for a webcam is definitely going to be codependent on the software being um 
not only user friendly, but giving you a lot of options to make the webcam to work and function correctly. And unfortunately with the S800, that was just not there. The Elgato webcams or just even the Razer webcams, all that stuff, because those webcams are from premium brands like Logitech and all that stuff, but they're so far behind in, I would say, quality of life when the software when it comes to software and not only that the capabilities of the webcams and onspot with their ai chips inside of their webcams are going to allow you to critique not only the picture quality but also critique and elevate your content in a more exciting way and i think a lot of people were kind of put back wherever on the tiny two from onspot because that was kind of like the entry level into using their webcams for ai and then they had the even more expensive um uh, onspot tail air i think it is um that's obviously more of a premium webcam and you could still do a lot of amazing things with the Onsbot Tiny 2 as well as the Tail Air. But what about those who are on a budget? What about those who are just getting into the space? Well, the only other options out there are 1080p 60 frames per second cameras um, that are coming from Elgato. And yes, the 60 frames per second does look good at 1080p, but those sensors, even on the Mark II for the face cam that's coming in at $150 that just got released this year, is like a revamped model it does not look that i would say marginally better than the sensor or wherever on the first wave or iteration of the face cam and i have that one and i will say that the, the mark ii does look marginally better but it's still 1080p 60 frames a second and in my personal opinion it still has that webcam webcam look that that essence behind it the same thing that when you see a c920 from logitech you're like that's a webcam, that's a C920. And that's coming from somebody who's had both of those cameras who have tried to use a GoPro as a camera and has three different cameras or whatever, Miller's cameras. And I will go ahead and say that I don't like the way the Elgato one looks. That's just my personal opinion. And I'm not even gonna go into the frustrations I've had with Elgato software from the camera hub to the capture cards to even what I'm using right now, which is the Wavelink software. Um, so I'm a very big component of if you have a device that comes with companion software, both of them need to work and function and make it easier for the end user. And in my personal opinion, this is something that I kind of glossed over when I talked about the OnSpot Tiny 2 when I did that review. I didn't really talk too much about the software. I was talking about how to use the camera in a more unique way for your live streams and your content creation and stuff. And unfortunately it didn't fit what i was trying to do specifically and i was like in a very point like zero one percent of what people would try to use the thing for um and unfortunately obviously it didn't accomplish that uh, i still would use a gopro to be able to do what i wanted to do with it but the onsbot meet 4k does have a wider field of view and it allows me to you know dance on stream and stuff like that and want do what i wanted it to do and I think the AI tracking, which I'll get into a little bit later, is a little bit different and more unique for those who are probably going to just use it for YouTube videos or whatever to spice it up a little bit. But for live streaming, I would go with the OnSpot Tiny 2 Lite because it has that gimbal that's attached to it just like its bigger brother the tiny two. So you have more, I would say, space to go left to right for the AI tracking but it also again will be good for a let's say a talking head video camera and what i would use these two cameras in tandem with each other is having the emeet as a top-down camera to show off your mouse and keyboard skills if you're live streaming or maybe i would use it for um, product unboxings whatever it is to shoot that content and in the software now that it's been updated thoroughly since i've even done my review on onspot tiny 2 you have different modes like portrait vertical you know landscape whatever you want to call it as well as a lot of ai features that would be really good for content creators who maybe do workout stuff workout streams art streams maybe whiteboard stuff or whatever for meetings you know zoom calls uh corporate work and stuff like that as well as like i said a lot of features that a lot of content creators who are doing unique stuff like i said on their streams would be able to do and they always wanted to get the tiny two but it was super expensive being 300 and like 40 bucks whereas this coming in at 179 bucks for the tiny two light it's a very very 
really good, I would say webcam and picture quality. And you, like I said, price to performance and the image quality that you get out of it, plus in tandem with the software being really, really good. In my personal experience, your results may vary, but in my personal experience, having the Tiny 2 for a while, having the Tiny 2 Lite and the Meet 4K for a little bit shorter of a time, I can honestly say that the software has not given me any issues other than the firmware update for the Tiny 2 that I needed to do, as well as the Meet 4K when I first got it in, both of those firmware updates took forever. And I think it's just because it's older webcams and obviously the Meet 4K was probably sitting there for a while before they sent it out. But um, it's gonna take a substantial amount of time for the OnSpot Tiny 2, as well as the Meet 4K um, to do those firmware updates. So you're gonna have to set aside time. It's not one of those oh, three minutes, five minutes and you're done. It's gonna be a long while. That's the only thing I would say with the software. And if you're one of those people who like to keep their stuff up to date all the time, as soon as a new update comes out, just know if you're streaming and you're doing video work and all that stuff, you're gonna have to set aside, like I said, get dedicated a, a substantial amount of time. I didn't record like the time or wherever, but it took a noticeably long time to where I was sitting here having to just to wait before I can even do any progression on the reviews and stuff. And that puts a hamper on me because I only have like four or five hours a day to do content creation. And if I'm sitting there for 30 minutes, to an hour on trying to record unboxing videos and waiting for firmware updates and all that stuff um that's not acceptable in my personal opinion but again it is what it is it might just be something that you have to just take the bullet on but outside of that the only other thing i would say is that be wary of touching these webcams all three of them because they will get hot to the touch there's warning labels on the boxes and in the manuals and stuff i'll try to leave the a digital version of the manuals for all these webcams in the description if i can find them i'll put them down there but there's enough labeling and stuff i just wish that on the actual cameras itself that it will give you that warning like they have i would say on done on the emeet and this is what you can see right here on the emeet it says caution hot and it has that little symbol I kind of wish that they would have put that on the actual webcams respectively themselves because again that's just a good stark reminder having it visible like hey maybe I shouldn't you know touch this in a certain way um, other than that that's really the only negatives I would say um, I never had a problem with you know setting it 4k 30 wherever in the software the only other thing I would say probably when you put them into OBS um, don't worry about configuring it into 4k 30 wherever through the video capture device wherever property windows um, you don't need to do that because the webcams are already set to 4k through the software because doing that I did notice at least for me um, I added, added like a five second to ten second delay which is very noticeable um, just looking at it or wherever I'll move my hands and then all of a sudden on the video I'll see my hands move and it's like it's going to trip you up and your audio is not going to match your video obviously um, so I wouldn't do that I would just let the OnSpot software force it into 4k 30 that's just my personal opinion maybe your results may vary but that's just what i've noticed and that's pretty much like i said all the negatives out the way i didn't have any problems or issues with any of these three webcams um and i'm just very surprised at the image quality of the of the I would say to meet 4k versus the actual uh on spot tiny two light i do like like i said the field of view on the i would say on spot meet 4k but the thing about it is once you turn on the ai tracking for both of them you can see that the ai tracking for the meet 4k is a little bit different and that's why i said you could use it technically to spice up your videos a little bit but for using it for live streams and stuff like that that tracking it's it's not going to be suitable i would say for the vast majority of people and that's why i said i could see a lot more people using it as a top down angle or like i have done put it up somewhere or wherever to get the whole scope of your room and that's why i would say i really wish that hopefully in the future on spot can release a mark ii of it or something like that and give it a wider field of view i think the sensor size is fine i think the colors and how much light it can absorb into the sensor wherever is perfectly fine but i do wish that it was a wider field of view almost like action cam wise um but that's just something that i personally want i don't think a lot of people could probably get a 
a use case scenario out of it. And I think depending on the angle that you put it, the Onsbot Mi 4K is gonna be that perfect, like I said, background, capture all of it. As long as you can get it in a far enough away from you in a good angle, it's gonna encapsulate enough of your room to get the point across for that type of angle. And like I said, it's gonna be perfect for top downs, all that stuff. Cause again, 4K, good resolution or wherever and good color renditions and stuff like that. I didn't notice anything, at least for me. Again, I'm not a professional. I won't be able to go into like histograms and, and all that stuff wherever for this type of thing, like Epo's box. But I will say that this webcam, again, to my eye, at least it looks pretty good in my personal opinion, especially for $150. And I'm in the software, I didn't really have to change much. And I'll get to what you should probably set these cameras up to or wherever for all three of them, um, or just webcams in general, my, my, my two cents or wherever or input on that. But again, software is really easy. The, the, I would say the Meet 4K is really good for $150. I kind of wish this existed when I would start a content creation because I would have just got this and that's it. Um, I don't know why I'm, Onspot is not pushing this webcam a lot, um, maybe because it doesn't have the gimbal and maybe it's more suited towards, you know, corporation at home work and stuff like that, where it's maybe not too much for content creators. But I think they're sleeping on the fact of how it zooms in with AI. And if you're not doing whiteboards or displaying something in your room or something like that, that needs to be in the picture as well. This is going to be good for, I would say, talking head videos. You know what I'm saying? You can add that little spice that you need as far as backing away from the camera and still zooming in on you. And as long as you don't go too far back, it doesn't mess with the image too much or whatever by cropping in and digitally zooming in. And as well, as soon as you get closer, you can always have a macro pad or a stream deck or something like that to turn off the AI tracking once you get to the distance that you want. And then, you know what I'm saying? You can activate it again and then step way and it can follow you and stuff like that that's something that's really really good in my personal opinion to be able to you know have access to with the uh, i would say the onspot meet 4k and like i said if you don't need the, all the fancy gimbal and stuff like that and maybe every now and then use the ai then get one for top down one for the talking head with two you know onspot meet 4ks i know both of them will be 150 dollars, but you will be good for i would say a really good decent YouTube setup, especially going into OBS. And maybe you have, you know, a, like I said, macro pad or a stream deck or whatever to turn off sources and turn them back on in OBS. You can quickly switch through the top down and, you know, the talking head or wherever video simultaneously, and you don't have to do anything really extra in post when editing. And you have, you know, like I said, 4k signals from both and both of them have the good sensor. So both of them are gonna look good. As long as you have, like I said, professional lighting, as long as you don't get these kind of panels or whatever, these are the Godox ES45s. These are not the Elgato ones, but these kind of lights from Elgato, Godox, any other newer, any other company or wherever, you don't want to get these kind of panel lights or whatever for webcams. You're gonna to want to get a actual light that has a soft box on it or something like that, or equivalent like a cob light or something. I'll leave ones that I recommend down in the description. But the reason why you want to get these is because these webcams have smaller sensors, even though the eMeet, I mean not the eMeet, but the Onsbot Meet 4K has a bigger sensor size. In my personal opinion, looking at them visually between the Onsbot Tiny 2 and the Onsbot Tiny 2 Lite even though it has that bigger sensor size and it allows in more light, these lights are only really good for mirrorless cameras that have, you know, lenses on top of them and they have an aperture or f-stop of like 1.4 all the way to 2.0. And that's only because these lights are, don't really get too bright as far as lux, not, not the wattage, not how bright they look. They might look bright to you, but the output, the, the lux that they put wherever lights per meter or wherever, they're not that bright in comparison to something like this or this light that's behind me that's giving me this rim light. That's what these panel lights are supposed to be anyways. They're supposed to be filling the dark side of your face or giving you a hair or rim light. They're not meant to be a actual key light. Elgato has popularized it, calling it a key light and most people have to use two of them. And that's why you have to use two of them to enlarge the light source. And they look good in setups because they're small, compact, and they're not like the soft box and everything like that. But you can ask anybody, 
professional lighting is always going to be better for webcams because of the output that's how strong the light is again those lumens or lux per meter or whatever that's what you want and like i said in comparison to these lights these actual cob lights are going to be way better and you can find them cheap and you can find small soft boxes and little poles to connect to your desk or wherever and it's going to give you a better light source or wherever for these webcams because again they have smaller sensors and that's the type of stuff that you need to get the best image quality out of these webcams in my personal opinion and in the software for both of these webcams out of the box or wherever obviously you're going to want to turn everything off of auto except for maybe like the autofocus or something like that but you're going to want to turn the color temperature to 5600 kelvin you're going to want to get a light that is either by color or at least daylight which is 5600 kelvin and what that means is daylight means the sun pretty much when you're outside in a bright sunny day what is that color temperature or what's the light look like from the sun is usually between 52 to 5600 kelvin and you can find really good cheap cob lights because they don't need to buy color they're just 5600 kelvin you can find them on amazon pretty cheap or wherever sometimes even under 100 bucks sometimes even for a decent one around 100 bucks or wherever get you a nice little soft box that's like 40 50 bucks or something like that and you're going to have professional lighting for your live streams for youtube videos and all that stuff and you can get it like i said all for the price of one of these or whatever and you're going to have a better light source and like i said image quality especially if you're going to be using webcams so again in my personal opinion what i would do as far as these webcams go is set the iso to 100 never go anywhere above it unless you're going further away from your light source then maybe crank the iso up to 200 but never go above that on any webcam including the on spots you never want to do that the shutter speed should always be double the frame rate so if we're shooting in 4k with these webcams you're going to want to at least i think on the on spot meet i have it set to 40 but you want to at least go to like i said uh 50 or 60 maybe 80 max on the shutter speed so anywhere like i said between 40 and 80 depending on how the image is looking to you and keeping it nice and clean that's what you're going to want to do for the shutter speed and then for the hue saturation and and like sharpness and stuff i always take sharpness out of webcams that's up to you personal preference wise but i did that and i barely had to really do any other things or whatever with these webcams because at least in my personal opinion you might want to tweak it depending on your skin tone depending on your shot your background all that stuff stuff obviously you can fiddle with it but I didn't feel like I had to really do too much whereas on the eMeet S800 and the Elgato face cam 60 Pro wherever again that's like the mark one or wherever of it um I see myself and other people having to adjust it way too much and like I said uh, outside of the shutter speed ISO and color temperature uh, no, I'll say color temperature for these webcams from Onsbot that's all I really need to do and that's crazy to me that you don't really have to do that much. It's not that much effort. And that tells me right there that the sensors and what they did for these products is vastly superior to the other premium brands out there who are supposed to be geared towards content creators and streamers who don't know what they're doing and they're not really pushing the industry forward where i feel like onspot is and probably being one of the leading factors or wherever as far as pushing the webcam industry forward because the only other thing that i would do wherever is probably get the onspot tiny two light depending on what type of content creation i'm doing if i'm doing more streaming work then i'll probably do that and get the like I said, the Meet 4K as my top down or secondary shot or something like that for you know my live streams and my video recording for YouTube. And then I would just save up money to get something like the, I don't know, Sony ZV-E10 Mark II that's coming out or wherever that's already available for pre-ordered, but that's like a thousand dollar camera. Or you can get the Mark I from the Sony ZV-E10 line that um, probably will, you could probably find used or wherever uh, a little bit after you know the pre-orders are done for the Mark II used probably for under $500 I would say just for the body alone and then you can go out and get a lens or wherever that's under $300 in the future you know that kind of stuff wherever as far as later on in your journey and even then by the time you get to that point to be able to get that stuff that equipment might be old enough or wherever that might even be lower in price because like I said if you as long as you're not going outside and like vlogging and stuff or whatever you're just sitting in your office and you're streaming and all that stuff and you're going to be sitting at your desk anyways 
why would you need to go and get a mirrorless camera unless you really want to when you have good quality webcams or wherever at this price point and that's what's crazy to me is that a lot of people are still going for these 1080p 60 frames per second cameras and thinking that you have to in order to get 4k 30 really good footage or wherever out of webcams you have to spend like 300 dollars or more and it's like how did onsbot do this with the onsbot tiny 2 light how did they get this gimbal and get this footage or whatever to look so good for $179? It's actually mind blowing. If you don't care about that stuff, and like I said, you're just streaming and stuff, as long as your motherboard can handle, you know, two signals of, you know, 4K 30, why not do it? And like I said, you do get some beauty effects and stuff like that that are gonna take more GPU resources. So you're gonna have to make sure your GPU can handle that. Um, as well as you do get the fancy stuff of like background blur. I would leave that on the one. I wouldn't crank it up anymore. With the Meet 4K, you do get the, you know, false background or whatever that you can apply or, you know, use like an actual backdrop, like a green screen, a blue screen. I'll leave the one I recommend down in the description to the video I did a review on but you're still gonna want these professional lighting even more so in that scenario because you're gonna want to make sure that you're lighting yourself correctly so that falsified backdrop or whatever looks believable and presentable in my personal opinion but other than that those are the two combos I would use and I do think that both of them have their I would say reason to be on the market and I think they're both actually worth the price you know what I'm saying? Whereas other products, I'd be like, eh, there's some caveats or whatever. It might not be really justified in price, but it's good enough to be like, okay, I recommend it. No, these webcams, I 100% endorse. I would go ahead and recommend it to anybody. Again, your results may vary. So, you know, I could be wrong, like I put in my stipulation for my review disclaimers, but overall, probably the best bang for the buck for webcams on the market you can't go wrong with either purchase i would recommend purchasing both together affiliate links down in the description obviously and obviously i no money switch hands or whatever for this but onsbot i'm gonna go ahead and say it if you want to sponsor the channel wherever i would be happy to do so you've already sent out you know a lot of webcams and stuff but i do think regardless if somebody sits down and asks me once they figure out what i do for a living as far as doing product reviews if they ask me what webcam i would recommend or what kind of camera i would recommend i would ask them their use case scenario and if they're just sitting in their office doing zoom calls meetings all that stuff i would tell them to take a look at the onsbot meet 4k as well as the onsbot light tiny 2 depending on like i said if they're doing more streaming work and they need that you know whiteboard feature and all that stuff go with the tiny two light because it's going to help you with streaming and, and doing your zoom calls and meetings and corporate work and companies and all that stuff but if you're just doing talking head videos like this maybe some casual streaming you don't care about the gimbal and all that stuff and the extra ai fe features and everything even if you never turn on the ai tracking for the onspot meet 4k that field of view alone and the quality of the image you've seen it for yourself why are you still watching the video again i'm not the best at setting these settings but links in the description definitely check them out thank you so much for onspot for sending out this stuff and i'll catch you guys in the next one don't forget to like and subscribe if you're new to the channel and you want to see more product reviews from me then check out the product review playlist at the end of the video and i'll catch you guys in the next one and in the future i'm probably going to do a comparison video of these two webcams versus all the other webcams i have um, at least the 4k options that I, I use and everything like that so you can make a more informed decision and again that's going to be a general overview of how they look fully and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in that video. Deuces, everybody. Much love.